I love that. Yeah. We, when we talk about inspiring change, it doesn't have to be like a grand gesture. It literally can be opening a door for somebody um, and just showing, just leading the way with that. So I, I really do love that. And it can be done on any scale whatsoever. Um, I feel like this links into this and I th um, is to consequences. And you talk about consequences a lot. Um, I feel like when you talk about consequences, it's slightly different to what most people in, in the context most people use. So I'd love to hear about it. Well, you know, B.S. Skinner is one of my heroes and his legacy to us, three words, selection by consequences. Now, people will say, oh, he worked with rats and pigeons. And, but he worked with a basic contingency of we do stuff for consequences. If you think about it, how much of the behavior you do throughout the day is because you expect to get something or you expect to avoid something aversive. Now, I think your point is well taken. When people think of consequences, they think of negative. A consequence is something negative. What a shame, because we do use more negative consequences in our world to control behavior instead of positive consequences. But when I say consequences, I'm thinking positive, man. I'm thinking of positive consequences. I ask my students, first day of class, how many are here to avoid failure? 80% raise their hand, man, 80%. And I say, well, I'm glad you're here. You were motivated by the consequence of avoiding failure. But how do you feel about that? Is it a requirement? Was this class a requirement or was this class an opportunity? Did you wake up to an alarm clock or an opportunity clock? I mean, what is your mindset? So again, my point is, if we simply think about, I'm working to gain, I'm working to get, I'm working to improve. And by the way, I like the word improve over change. This change is kind of threatening. I don't want to change, but do you want to improve? Do you want to do better? Do you want to be the best you can be? Of course we do. And so again, but we can't get away from it. Consequences. Now, some people use the word reward and some people in fact use the word reinforcement. And that's a technical word. And people have to realize that B.F. Skinner used the word reinforcement and his followers do. But reinforcement is a procedure of using positive consequences to influence behavior. If the behavior increases as a result of that consequence, you can call it positive reinforcement. So I just say positive consequence. Sometimes I work for a positive consequence, but it doesn't affect my behavior. But it's still a mindset. It's where I'm going. How, how do you learn to get the mindset to a positive place over the negative place? Well, we don't have to learn it, do we? Because we know it. I mean, in fact, your common sense says, you know, yeah, I feel better when I'm working for something positive. If I change and say, I'm going to like this class tomorrow to learn, that, that will change my whole perspective. I'm writing this paper for this class so I can learn rather than avoid failing. So we don't have to learn about the value of positive consequences, but we just have to start experiencing them, don't we? We have to start, again, that's great. We get back to gratitude. When you wave to that driver, you're giving them a positive consequence, a simple positive. When you say thank you, when you give somebody a smile, that's a positive consequence. If you just reflect and say, so how did that make you feel? You know, how, how do it make you feel? Do it again. So I, I appreciate the fact that, yeah, perhaps we have to learn that it feels good to focus on positive rather than negative consequences. Here's a word that we have to get in touch with. The word is feedback. And if your boss tells you or your friend tells you, can I give you some feedback? How does that make you feel? What, what are you thinking? Oh man, it's going to be negative. It's gonna, he's going to tell me I screwed up. You know, I didn't do a good job. That would be called correct feedback. And we do need that. But what if we had a different mindset? 
What if feedback is showing support? No, it's not about calling you out for your mistakes. It's about appreciating what you've done and, and explaining what I saw you do that was particularly special. What if we had a world that gave more supportive feedback or call it a positive consequence than corrective or negative feedback? What if, what if we all did that more? Imagine the improvement in our attitude, in our mindset, simple change. Do you, do you think there's something to self-talk? So um, yeah, creating these sort of, developing that mindset through self-talk. Oh yeah, great word, man. Now, the, the behaviorists call it covert behavior. Overt behavior is stuff I can see. Covert behavior is talking to yourself. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, we mentioned positive psychology. Positive psychology is all about futuristic thinking. I mean, yes, the past influences our behavior thinking about what's happening tomorrow or what I have to look forward to. That's happiness, man. And so it's, it is all about self-talk. You have to talk to yourself. You have to, in, in behavioral science, we talk about the ABC model. Antecedent conditions, behavior, the B, and the C, consequences. Now, your self-talk can be an antecedent. That is, you can tell yourself, I need to do this. You need to remind yourself, I need to remember to do this. That would be an antecedent self-talk. And after you do it, thank yourself, man. Hey, I did okay. Thank yourself. And that would be the consequence. So that, that's brilliant. How you talk to ourself is critical. And it fits right into our discussion here. I mean, we don't always talk about self-motivation. How do we motivate ourselves, you know? Now, we know what the research says about self-motivation. We feel more self-motivated when we perceive some choice. You know, I, I don't have to do this. I get to do this. I have some choice. I didn't have to. And then we feel competent. Another C word. When we're competent at doing worthwhile work, what I'm doing is making a difference and I'm pretty good at it. How do I know? Because somebody gave me some feedback. My boss told me I did that pretty well. So that's supportive feedback. That's the C word. And then the other C word I use is community, a sense of togetherness. So my point is, how do we deal with those? It takes self-talk, doesn't it? I have to say to myself, yeah, this, this is a community in which we're working and what I'm doing is helping others. And, you know, I am pretty good at this. And I got, and my, my point is we see our world, then we talk to ourselves about what we perceive and that can influence whether we're motivated or not. 